Hey everyone, welcome again to another episode of Beyond Ballin'. We've made it to another awesome Sunday. New live, new energy. Charlie, I see you in this one. So I already get, did a great introduction. As you guys know, you guys know who's about to join this call. So let's get her in here right now. Drum roll. Yay! <laughs> there we go, finally. Um, how are you, Charlie? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, we were patiently awaiting. I was like, I don't know what's going on with Instagram. You know, they changed all the buttons like they I'm always do. Cool. But it's good though, so now we're on, so we good. I know, exactly, awesome. Everyone was like, where is she, where is she? Okay, cool. So jump right into the questions because I know everyone's eager to hear okay. from me. So my first is, when did you start playing basketball? At what age? Um, I started playing basketball at five years old. Like, just immediately fell in love with the game. Uh, I played volleyball. I was in swim, softball, everything. But I think just the love for the game, and I was also always tall, and so it just made sense. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you come from a very athletic family right both your parents played and your brother plays football was yeah. there pressure in the house to be good at sports because you came from that environment it was it was some pressure there both of my parents played collegiately uh they played semi-pro overseas and me and my brother I'm the oldest it's just two of us and so my younger brother would always look up to me um of course he's a football player but before prior to that he was a basketball player and so him watching me in practice or just traveling with my mom and my dad to go to my games, it was always pressure to be, you know, that sibling that has to set the tone. And so I always would have to, you know, set the standard of, you know, how to play basketball. And it was pressure, but it was also fun at the same time because I was teaching my brother and just young girls in general when I was playing basketball, I always had to know that I was being watched all the time and was a role model. So, yes. Speaking on that, because, I mean, you were ranked pretty highly at a young age, as you just mentioned. So how do you feel about that? What do you think is the biggest thing, before I get onto that, what do you think is the biggest thing that kind of separates those players from being good to being great? Oh, man. Especially now being in the WNBA, you have to have that certain tactic that makes you, you know, better than everybody else. Because when you're on the big stage and everybody else is good, you know, you have to have something, like you said, that separates you from everybody else. And... When I was in high school, I was exposed to it very early and I had to find something about my game that everybody liked and that I was comfortable with and make that my own. And so now being a pro athlete and having that pressure and, you know, that task of being the greatest early on, it just helped me and carried me on to where I'm at now. But, you know, it's just fun. You know, you can't always think of it as like pressure or you have to be the best at everything. I just I love basketball. And so it's easy for me to just. That's awesome. So what made you fall in love with basketball? Man, I just, you know, I'm really passionate about the sport. I hate losing. I always like to see my progress from high school to college to now. And so just the love of the game, just being physical, you know, having it, all the attention, all the lights, all the interviews, like I enjoy stuff like this. So just that coming with basketball, the sport itself is something that I like to do. So I just fell in love with it. That's awesome. And okay, so your parents played. Were there any other people that you would say were mentors or where you learned from the game? Yeah, so I had a cousin. I have a cousin on my dad's side. He's actually played in the NFL. And okay. so seeing him being a pro, he was played for Jacksonville Jaguars, definitely inspired me, even though he was playing football. Um, I just always was um, around athletes, even my friends, my peers. Um, just really at a young age, uh, seeing everybody playing a sport and um, I was getting into sports, you know, I was into like swim at the time, like you're six, four, like, are you swimming, <laughs> you know? So, but just basketball was just made my main sport and I fell in love with it. That is beautiful. Okay. So obviously the WNBA draft, that is a memory that I'm sure is etched in your mind forever. Can yeah. you tell me about how it felt when you got. It was, it was amazing. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. It was amazing. Just that right. night. Um, I just remember being, I wasn't nervous. I was more excited than everything, than anything. I was pumped up. My family was there, uh, my boyfriend, my friends, you know, so it was just fun. It was a fun night, um, exciting night to hear my name being called. Um, 
you know, Dallas Wings. Can't seem to get out of Texas. Love Born and raised in Texas. Went to University of Texas. Now I'm in Dallas. And so um, just a blessing, just a blessing. That whole night itself was amazing. I believe it. So you touched on it a little bit, right? You've always played for the home team, per se. How awesome is that to be so close to home, have, you know, your village really able to come and support you? How is that? Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, you have your support system right there. It's not like they have to go, you know, states over and, you know, cross border lines to come watch you play. They're right there. So that's amazing in itself. Um, having that support system is really important. I feel like um, when you're playing your sport, you know, you need a team, you need a mentorship, you need love around you. And so I have a really good support system. And, you know, they follow me all throughout my career, family, friends, et cetera. That's awesome. So the WNBA, the league itself is obviously growing, right? We're seeing so many different aspects that are awesome. What do you think you personally could bring to the league to help it kind of keep that upward propelling? I would say just me being the position that I am, um, play the four and the five, just rebounding, making sure that, you know, my field goal percentage is high, um, making sure always that I'm being a good teammate, uh, being a rookie last year, going into my second season, um, just taking the next step, you know, each year you want to get better. And so, you know, this season really just focusing on just being um, better than I was last year. That's always the goal. Awesome. And what would you say was your favorite moment of this past season? Oh, uh, we, we touched a little bit. You know, we got got in the playoffs a little bit. So that was fun. You know, being a rookie, you know, we were playing against the Sky, of course. Congrats to them. You know, they went all the way and won it. But that itself was a good experience, you know. Being a rookie, going to the playoffs, that's that's an amazing accomplishment. So, and I was proud of us and our team. And it really just was a taste of the Dallas Wings and, you know, how far we can go, you know. So that was really a, a motivation for us for this upcoming season. Definitely. So now for those young girls who would love yeah. to follow footsteps and play in the WNBA, what would you say is the biggest difference between college and playing professionally at that level? I would say for sure the speed of the game. Uh, the maturity level, how poised the players are here. It's like you can't get away with a lot of stuff you did in college for, say, if you're the best player in NCAA. You know, you're playing against the best. You're playing against women that have been in the league for eight-plus years, ten years. And so I would say the biggest adjustment is just, you know, the speed of the game, the maturity of the game. Um, for sure, have to get in your playbook a lot more than when you did in college. Uh, I would just say your first year when you get from college to the pros is just a learning experience and you have to be able to, you know, hone in what they're teaching you and apply that to your game. I love that. And so that kind of touches into my next question. You're actually in Texas right now training, getting ready for the yeah. season. Yeah, what yeah. of your game are you hoping that you can kind of tweak and adjust for next season? Uh, for sure, I can, I can tweak my, my face-up game a lot more. Um, being that I'm on the post, you know, taking players off the dribble a little bit more, facing up my face-up game has to for sure improve just my overall game, but mainly that especially. Awesome. Now, you have a growing and an awesome following so far on social media, I'd say, right? So what do you say is your pers your personal brand? Ah, my... oh, That's a good question, actually. Still working on that, my personal brand. Um, it's a lot. You know, there's a lot of things to me. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I'm going to think that. Yeah. I'm going to bring it to you some years down the line. Yeah. Bring, bring that question back to me. When <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I get the feeling that you're very multifaceted, you know, which is awesome. Exactly why we wanted you on this show because you do do more than just play basketball, yeah. which is for people to know. So that's awesome. So I'm sure as a professional athlete, right, tremendous amount of companies reach out to you. They want, you know, you to promote different products. How do you decide which ones you work with and which ones you don't? I would just say just now just basing off your schedule. You know, you, you're going to have everybody trying to come and do stuff with you, but it's just really what you're interested in. Like you said, my personal brand, what I stand for, mainly staying, you know, in that realm of, of companies, you know, you want it always. You want it to kind of be a balance, and so I'm still working on that. Um, for sure, want to do something with clothing one day. Have a clothing brand, something like that. Um, I'm a pretty healthy eater, and I work out a lot, so maybe like um, like a protein shake brand or something like you know something that has to do with sports. You know, so we're working on that though. 
Awesome. So now what advice would you give to someone who is looking to grow their personal following, right? They play sports, they spend a lot of time being an athlete, but they're looking to grow their life beyond that on social media, but they don't really know how to find their, you know, niche, like that group, or like you said, like you, you know, you already know health and fitness is kind of your realm. How yeah. do they find that for themselves? Yeah, that's a good question. I would for sure say just um, for one, be active on social media because, you know, at first I really wasn't, but, you know, to grow your brand, people want to know what you do. You know, people want to know what you do on a daily basis. Um, so you find something that you really like to do and show the world, you know, and so that way you grow, grow your brand, you know, whether that's TikTok. TikTok's really hot right now, you know. So just finding that thing that, that you love, that niche and, you know, Put it out for the world to see, you know, document it, document it. like a YouTube channel. I don't know something, but, you know, that can definitely help you, your brand and show people, you know, who you really are. I love that. So do you have a vision board? I don't. My you mom. Don't. That's not yeah. Oh, told me to get one. <laughs> yeah, good. But if you did, OK, now we're a visual, a mental um, vision board that we have right now. If there were three things on there, what would they be? like that you're hoping to achieve in the WNBA? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, WNBA championship, uh, all WNBA first team. Ooh. That's a good one. What's the third one? Wow. Most improved. I love it. MIP. Yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. That is amazing. So you trying to touch on it. You have a YouTube channel yourself. I do. I'm not active on it, but it's there. <laughs> I mean, okay, you know, you it's, have. Yeah, it's like Charlie Collier, if that's literally the name. So, <laughs> yeah. are there any other things that you're liking to, that you're hoping you can dive into this upcoming season? Say it again. You kind of cut out. Are there any other things that you're hoping you could dive into this upcoming season? Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Right now, I'm just mainly just focusing on, you know, training camp is coming up soon. I'm just right now, just working out and, you know, Hopefully down the road, we'll see what was there to come. Definitely. Now you have an awesome, an awesome show, just like this one, you know, on your page, right? And what is the name of it? It's like Center Court, right? Center Court, yeah, with Charlie. Yeah. yeah. I got to interview Kevin Durant, Dwayne Bacon. I mean, just to name a few, like some yeah. awesome players. So tell me what is the biggest thing that you've learned while being on the other side of the mic, you know, asking the yeah. question of being asked. I learned like, it's 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 not hard to talk to people that don't want to talk if you know you make them comfortable you know what i'm saying like for you it's like a conversation you know you chill you don't make it awkward you kind of help them flow with it i learned that a lot too because it were some people that i interviewed and i'm like okay they're not the easiest to talk to but you kind of work around that and like you're good at it so it's like the more you do it the more you learn other people and what they like to talk about and how to ask your questions how to transition into your next question. I'm learning all that, you know. I need to take more tips from you, but you know, that's mainly that's mainly the hardest part is like that transition because you don't want to make it like awkward, you know. Exactly. No, and I think the biggest thing that I would say as advice go as advice goes is just practice. Cause literally, like you said, it's a conversation. You know, you have the questions that you want to go on, but at the end of the day, if the conversation, you know, changes, then you can create another one, just like you would if you're talking to somebody naturally. So but you do a great job. So props to that. We all need to go check it out. If you guys don't already, go to her Instagram, check it out. I'm sure it's on your IGTV, right? And we're going to look for future episodes for sure. But what has been the most surreal moment since you've become a professional athlete? Oh, man. I was starstruck when I was on the court with Candace Parker. Like, it was crazy. Like, had chills. Like, couldn't act too, you know, starstruck because I'm like, okay, I'm a pro too, so I got to act act the part <laughs> but I, deep down I was like wow I'm on the court with Candace Parker like this was someone I looked up to watched on TV watching WA watching her highlights at Tennessee like had her sparks jersey when I was little so that was definitely like my welcome to the league moment for sure and how was that experience because not many of us are going to get oh. on the court with Candace so yeah. tell us I carry something for you yeah no like we were on the court and that one time, I don't know how it happened. I got switched on her, like I was guarding her. So I was like, okay, okay. defense, like, you know, this, you could take a picture afterwards, <laughs> but it, it was so cool. It's just like anybody in the league. Now you got Sylvia Fowles, Brittany Griner, like so many great players 
that I've watched growing up and you know you're playing against them it's like you're in the league with the best of the best and you're a part of that group so it was a blessing for sure and you are starred and circled on that scouting sheet I already know you know what I mean it's not like you just you know they they know you're coming too they know you that is amazing so you're sponsored by Nike right yeah. which is super cool how was that experience Oh, Nike, that, that was that was a good process. You know, even going into the draft, you know, had Nike, had different people, but I've always worn Nike as a kid. So it was like a no brainer, you know, go with Nike. I love Nike, Jordan, wear Jordans, wear Nike, but that experience is cool in itself. Just signing your Nike deal, you know, having to sign it actually is crazy. Definitely. So this might be a big question, but I think it's important, right? What do you think you want your legacy to be Basketball. basketball wise yeah oh really good question because you know everybody wants to be a winner everybody wants to win championships and everybody wants to be you know when it comes down and it's, and it's all said and done the greatest ever but I honestly think what I've been through and what I'm still going through as a young I'm only 22 years old accomplishing what I'm accomplishing it's like you know I always see the greater good and everything like I think I have way more to give to this game. And so just when it's all said and done, like I'm I'm gonna be the greatest ever. So mm. one of the greatest ever. Like that's just my mentality with everything I do um, off the court, on the court. So when it's all said and done, like I believe I put the work in, that's gonna be my legacy for sure. Mm. Chills, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Yeah, and I mean, your work ethic is the biggest thing, you know, and we need that workout plan. I mean, y'all, she has like an eight pack. I'm trying to get like you. Hey. Your body is banging. Like, freaking, what, I'm freaking. What, it's, what's the biggest secret, though? Tell us what the secret is, because I'm not gonna lie. Like, you could do all the abs in the world. It's really what you eat. I mean, mm. all what you eat, you just eat all your greens, eat your fruits, you know, Cut back on soda. I just kind of hard alcohol. You know, gotta cut it out. No more casa. No oh. casa. But no. Just, yeah. <laughs> I, oh my gosh. I mean, because one picture you posted, I was like, I zoomed in. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like yeah. that is so awesome. I mean, because I know I know people that work hard, and you know. Sometimes it just doesn't look like it. You know what I mean? So it's awesome to have that. And, you know, it shows. Like, that is that is beautiful. Yeah. Thank um, you. Sure. So I read the other day, and I'm going to read it. And it says, to sit at the endorsement table as a women's basketball, play basketball player, you have to be the most marketable, most IG followers, and best looking. Now, for somebody mm -hmm. that's at the highest level, do you think that statement has some merit to it? Do you agree or disagree? Ah, uh, That's... I think um, John Quell just posted something about that. Yeah, he did. I just. Yeah, yeah, she did. Um, it has a lot to do with your following. Like for me, like my following is okay. Is okay, but I mean, if you're in the WNBA. It's like you know, you're a basketball player. Like you're a, like how a boy is in the NBA. I'm a girl in the WNBA. You know, it has a lot to do with. <sighs> really, don't want to touch on it because I'm not trying to, you know. But it has a lot to do with, it's a lot of politics in that, but yes. you know, I just play the game. I don't work exactly. with anything, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. what it is. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So my last question, and this one might be the most important, but there's no wrong answer. So don't worry. What do you think being a beautiful baller means to you? Uh, it's actually, it's an honor. It's an honor. I mean, you, you're feminine, you're playing basketball, you're looking good while you're playing good. So it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it means a lot. You know, it means a lot. And, you know, just me growing up and becoming a woman and still, you know, learning on and off the court, it means a lot. You know, it means a lot to be beautiful and a basketball player because you can be. You can also be, you know, if you want to step out and be in the modeling industry, you can do that and also hoop. But at the same time, when you're on the court, you can also also be a badass, too. So it's like, you know, I like it. I like um, it. I love that. Great answer. And I lied. That's not my last question. So okay, <laughs> all-star game, who do we have? Oh, I'm going with Team Durant. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? 
I'm, I'm gonna go with Team Durant. You know, uh, DMV love over there for sure. No, but, uh, he's in her, he's in his hometown. Is in his hometown, but I mean, you know, no brainer, right? I think so. No brainer. You know. <laughs> Well, this is so great, Charlie. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. I had a great time. I'm sure everybody watching learned so much. We're so awesome. And we will be following your journey. If you guys don't already, make sure to follow her on Instagram. What other social media do you have where we can connect with you? I have Twitter. I have TikTok. I have Snap, whatever you know. Charlie Collier, or is it the same handle? The same, Charlie Collier, my first and last. Great. Super easy. Thank you so much, girl. Thank right. you. Have a good one. You too. Another great episode in the books, you guys. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me. I know we had a little bit of technical difficulties in the beginning, but that was awesome. She's an amazing young woman, and we will all be following her journey. If you guys do not already, like I mentioned, make sure to go and follow her. And if you want to see our past episodes of Beyond Ballin', head over to our IGTV. We have them on YouTube, and we have them on our Facebook page. It is Beautiful Ballers. So till next time, we have another episode this Wednesday coming up, and I'm going to show you guys, or I'm going to tell you guys who that guest is going to be shortly. So make sure to turn on your post notifications for the page so that you don't miss anything. Bye, you guys.